Hello, 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 hello. Welcome. Welcome to the third part of our video series where I take you on for a ride and kind of showing what it takes to build a building from start to finish, right? So we are currently at the design development stage and you have if you haven't seen the previous videos, I suggest you check them out because you'll be up to date. They're not that long. This one is also going to be pretty short, I hope. So it's been two weeks since the last part. And during these two weeks, we have been kind of finishing up little bits and pieces about the project, about the proposal part of the project, um, moving some walls and just making sure that um, the proposal that we create is suitable for the client and that the client will accept it. And today we have sent the proposal to the client, the client was happy and accepted our proposal, which means that this stage is now done. Yay! And also it means that I can show it to you and kind of just guide you through the, the PDF document that you might expect to see at the end of this kind of a um, stage for this kind of a project. So just looking at the PDF that you can You've been already seeing it on, this, on the screen. Um, I do have a few things here blurred out just because I don't want to leak any information to the internet. Internet might be a scary place. So sorry about that. But basically the first page is literally just what this document is about, you know, explaining boring stuff such as the address, the project registration number and blah, blah, blah. All of those things. Boring. Next. Second one, uh, just straight up the, the, the legend of, of what you what kind of documents you might know, what kind of drawings you might expect in the PDF. Third is all of the uh, measurements for, for the of, of the project, such as the site, um, square, square meters, the, the, the area, area of the site, uh, what's the intensity of the of the site, what's the density of the site, um, how many apartments there are. So we're, we're kind of doing a single family house, right? So it's only going to be one apartment. Um, and then what's the area of the building? What's the uh, not uh, area that is not being used for living quarters? Um, the useful area for living quarters and, and so on right and then by the end of it we have the energy efficiency class ab about which i will talk in just a second but this is basically all of the you know measurements next ah yeah more measurements next um then we have like a explanation text i guess where um Everything about the building is written in a semi-free form. Well, it's not a semi-free form if it's just quotes from the government's like rules, but you know, it is what it is. And it's uh, basically just an architect just writes down where it's located, uh, what's the purpose of this building, um, and, and so on, right? Then... And there's a lot of text here, right? That's the boring part, honestly, for, for any architect. And then we have the site plan. And the site plan is kind of the first exciting thing about this proposal, right? Because it's an actual drawing. So it's a little bit more um, detailed as to what you would expect to see um, from an architecture student, for instance, uh, because it has like... Um, for instance, coordinates for the uh, like the actual coordinates for every break in the site bound boundary. It has uh, measurements in the site. It has also marked out uh, where are they? There we go. The, the the electricity lines that are going underground and other other stuff. Uh, let me just double check if I'm not missing anything. No, I'm not. Okay, so it's it's mostly in the site plan here that you see is mostly used for goddammit. 
uh, just for, for the surface treatment and to determine what kind of surface treatment there is going to be for the landscape, right? Um, then we have the actual plan, right? So this is what we finished up with. And it's basically, if, if you've seen previous uh, videos, uh, previous parts, uh, you, you'll notice that this area right here got enlarged quite a bit and that is expected you know you you uh, we needed much more space in the living room area uh, just because we couldn't fit anything nicely uh, with the previous super narrow um, house that that we've done so now it's it's enlarged other than that not much has changed you have all of the measurements you have um, the 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 numeration of the doors enumeration of the doors with the measurements of the doors as well uh, same thing for windows right so that's that's plan one plan two quite the same thing right and then uh, this is the furniture wait is this yes this is like the furniture plan uh, where we specify where the furniture is going to be. This is not uh, necessary for construction, but it's necessary for the client to kind of understand and grasp the sizes of the uh, of the rooms. Um, and also us just to have it kind of mapped out before we move forward. Same thing for the second floor. Then we have the roof. I believe we have the roof. Yes, we do have the, the, the roof plan. Um, for the roof plan, the main main thing is just what kind of a surface, not surface, uh, what kind of material are we going to be using for the roof. So that's kind of marked out as um, micro cement, right? And then where will we have metal? So only this little area right here will, will be actually cladded in metal. Next up, we have the facades. So for the facades, um, all you care about is the windows, or all we care about is the windows and the cladding, right? So the, the windows are all marked out as per usual. This is like window three, window eight, window eight, meaning that these two are the same and they can be ordered, you know, same window, two copies of it. So you always try to you try to make sure that you don't have too many windows that are different because it just costs much more to order different windows. Uh, so for instance, here, one, two, three, four, all of these four windows are the same, except that this one has the partition while these three don't, but that's fine. We can specify it as being a, like a unique version of L2 style window. Um, so th those are our facades. Everything that is brown is going to be copper and everything that is not brown <laughs> is going to be, um, how do you call it, like tiles, uh, dark tile, tiles. More facades, sections, right? Uh, so sections right now, at this stage, the sections are still filled in black. Right, the inside of the building, not the building, inside of the walls and the slabs is still filled in black, and that will change for the next during the next phase, which I'll talk about in just a second. But right now, this is nothing too too fancy. Just us testing out if you know stuff fits where it needs to fit, and if the ceiling heights are good enough. Right, so we have that. Next up, we have the renders. Okay, so as as I talked before, uh, we have the the, the, the cladding uh, in copper, and also we have the tiling in um, black tiles. I don't know the English name for them. I am sorry, but it's just regular black tiles, right? So here are the renders, and that is that. So. This is the like the, the, the folder or, or the, the, the PDF that we send to the client to um, 
finalize the design development stage. And since the client has accepted it, the stage has ended and we are moving into the construction documentation stage or construction document making stage. I don't know, <laughs> but we're moving to the next stage. That's, that's the important part. So in the next stage, we will be working with the uh, engineers and we will be kind of developing this, this design further, uh, making sure that all of the, like the structure is fine, that the energy efficiency is actually A++ and not, the des not just a desired energy efficiency and so on. Um, but there is a, pro a problem with this project. And this is where, where I start saying whoopsie. So the problem with this project is that our, um, let's, let's go back to the site, right? In the site, let me zoom into it. The building is located here, right? Which seems fine, right? It's right in the middle of the site. What's the problem? Well, if we look at the government documents and we go through them, go through the government documents and we find our, um, our site and we zoom into it. Do you know what this uh, rectangle? Uh, you can't really see my, my mouse, but I'll, I'll do this. This rectangle that is hatched, do you know what that is? That's where you, you can build. Everything outside of that rectangle, you cannot build. That's a whoopsie because our building doesn't fit in that rectangle. It's offsetted from that rectangle. That's oopsie number one. Oopsie number two is that for this particular, and I talked about oopsie number two uh, in, in part two, I believe, and also part one of this, uh, um, of this series. But oopsie number two is that the density of, uh, of the site, currently regulated density, is 0 0.17. Our, our density that we get, sorry, that's a phone. Mm, our density that we get is 0 0.22. Problem number two. So the building is too big and also it's not where it should be. We can't move it because there is a tree right here this tree that needs to be saved. So we can't move it uh, because if we move it towards the, 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 the street, the tree is just going to be cut down and we definitely want to save that tree. And we can't make it smaller because the client wants a sauna. <laughs> and there's no way that they can't do without a sauna. So what do we do? Well, we need to change the what's called a detailed development plan. A detailed development plan is exactly what I've shown you here on, on this, uh, where is it? There we go. This thing right here that is owned by the government, right? So we need to write um, official form where we ask the government to first move this um, rectangle further into the, um, into the site. And second of all, um, change the site density from 0 0.17 to 0 0.22. And technically it's possible to do, and we will be doing it. So we talked with the client about it, and the, basically the idea is, if we can't do it, if the government says no, or municipality in this case, if the municipality says no, then we will need to redo the whole project from start, but the client is willing to pay for the hours. So that's, that's fine. Not nice, but fine. Um, okay. So it, that's, that's if we don't manage, if we manage to change the, I'll call it DDP, the detailed development plan. If we manage, manage to change this bad boy, then, um, the underground electricity line, which is going right here, 
can you see it on the screen? You should be able to see it on the screen. Will need to be moved. That that will need to be done. So that's another form that needs to be filled in. And also the sewerage and so on. All, all of those things will need to be readjusted to the new place here. But that's at that point, that's not of our concern. That's where the client will need to kind of interfere and start fixing their documents by themselves, right? Because we'll be busy building up the technical project, like the second uh, phase of the, not the second. This is far from being the second phase. The detailed uh, construction document phase, we'll be doing that. Don't know where my mind went with this one. Anyway, how long will it take? Four months. It should take four months. If we're lucky. It's probably going to be five. Well, we're usually not lucky. So it's going to be four, four or five months. Um, so we do have a little bit of a break with this project right now. Because, you know, we can't really do much. While we will be waiting, there is going to be a little bit of prep work that we will be doing for the permits and uh, and so on, but it's nothing too interesting, so I'm not going to talk about that. And now, since I don't want to wait four months to bring out part four of our series, because, I mean, everyone's going to forget about it by, by that time, I'm going to actually jump to another project that has started together with this one, right at the same time as this one, and in which I'm also involved. And I'm going to kind of show it to you and talk about the next stage, because for that one, we didn't need to change anything, right? So we're already moving, we have moved past the... Um, the, 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 the design development stage and we're right at the construction documentation stage, right? And we have already begun doing it. So without any further ado, and here it is, here's the second project. I'm not going to bother you with showing the design development stage hand in for the clients because I already showed you it with the previous one. So for this one, I'm just going to show you the pretty stuff, the pictures, right? <laughs> so, and, and just kind of quickly introduce you to, to the, um, yeah, to the client and to the project itself. So it's a single family house and it's located in Lithuania, in Vilnius. And the client uh, basically wanted a really spacious single floor building, right? That's single floor family house. Um, nothing much to it. Oh yeah, low, low budget. Pretty, pretty damn low budget. So we had to cut quite a few corners here. It is um, using up the maximum possible um, surface area, like uh, surface area that you can actually use on the site, but it's not exceeding any measurements, meaning that we don't need to change anything about it and we're just moving forward with the construction documentation stage or construction document stage. So to show you only the beginning of that stage, I'll I'll kind of I guess I'll I'll, uh, I'll start talking about the site, right? Because I already showed you the site of the previous project, so might as well do it here. So for the site, it's quite the same right except for a few a few things a few things have been added um, and that is the these x and y measurements for every corner of the building right these measurements are not measurements coordinates these coordinates are added and you can see that these are pretty damn precise and the reason for that is um, these gps coordinates are going to be used during the construction to measure out where, uh, you know, where the building is located. That's basically it. And also for the, the, the government agencies to figure out if there are no underground pipes that uh, the building might intersect with. 
but we can see from from the documents that the government gave us that there are no pipes so it should be all good besides that everything else is quite similar to the design development stage project to the previous stage uh, project Handen. then we have the i guess the architectural part of it or the beginning for the architectural part so if I zoom in here, you can see that it's a little bit more detailed because we have all of the different layers uh, shown. We have more measurements and we have um, like everything is just done at a higher detail, right? Together with more explanations as to what we're looking at. You know, wh what kind of sandwich are we talking about when we specify a wall, right? 10 centimeter for the interior finish or sorry 10 millimeter 10 millimeter for the interior finish then arco uh, blocks like the porous concrete blocks then heat insulation 300 millimeters and facade cladding 10 20 millimeters we're leaving some breathing room there and so on right so this is for every type of the wall um let's sorry about that there we go let's jump to the second uh page this is a single floor house so it's uh, so we're going fast second page quite the same thing right we have ourselves a bunch of um what should we call it uh, furniture a bunch of furniture pieces and so on even espresso machine is written <laughs> where, where it's going to be located but uh, in, in terms of the furniture, it's, we are giving, giving it where the furniture is going to stand and what kind of furniture, but we're not specifying the furniture type or anything like that, right? That is going to be in the interior design, uh, for the interior designer to figure out, right? And, and to do. But these are like the suggestions i guess from the architect and also where the outlets are going to be like the electricity outlets so that is that next up what are, what the hell is this uh, oh yeah piping where the piping is right where the drainage is uh where the uh, where do you need the pipes to come out of the ground or of the wall um, very very straightforward here next up the roof so the roof is a little bit tricky because for the roof you need uh, certain degrees for for it to flow down and you also don't for the water to flow down and you also don't want um, the roof to be too thick right because you need the degree, right? And if you need to go super long distance with, at a certain degree, um, then th the thickness will keep increasing of, of that slope, right? So you always want to play around with, with short slopes and multiple um, drainage points, right? So here you can see, um, where are they? There should be multiple sorry yeah there we go i can see one there's one two there's the second one there's the first one th three uh four five and somewhere here it's gonna be six seven seven drainage holes in total for this roof and we actually used grasshopper to <laughs> generate this roof um to make sure that the the, the height that we need is the smallest possible height. So this is the division that um, we came up with by using Grasshopper. Just a fun fact. Uh, sorry, uh, skipped ahead. Uh, here we have the facade. So the facade is um, just like for the proposal phase or for the design development stage phase, whatever you call it. Um, the facade has um, different Sorry, different windows and, and doors shown, uh, marked out with all of the 
measurements, every single measurement that you might need is going to be shown. And of course, the facade, uh, like cladding types and materials are also going to be shown, right? So that's one. That's second page with two other facades. Then we have the sections. Remember when I said that the sections are just black uh, in the proposal stage? Not anymore. And uh, construction stage, I'm just shortening it, <laughs> right? So for, before we had the proposal stage, now we're having the construction stage. Uh, so in the construction stage, we actually are specifying, you know, we are specifying the, the, the sandwich and we are showing every, every part of the wall. This is not engineers who are doing it, it's the architects. The engineer is calculating where, like the retaining wall B, sorry, well, where the beams should be, where the retaining walls should be, and so on, while the architect that does the detailing. And basically for a building like this, you don't you do, don't really need an engineer because it's really straightforward. You just look at it and you see that it's going to work. But for certain buildings, you definitely need a goddamn engineer to tell you that it's it's possible. Then next stage, uh, steps uh, or next two pages are uh, kind of interesting in a sense because it's basically just a library of windows that were used for... Oops, windows and doors that were used for the design and they have like the code in RAL. This is the code uh, for the color. Uh, they have how many of them are there in the project. So window one is uh, window type one. There are two of them uh, in the project. Window type uh, DK, I don't know what that means. Uh, there's only one and the measurements, of course, and if there is a windowsill or not. So zero means that there is no windowsill. Right. So that is the where we're currently at with this project. Um, there is actually one more thing that I would like to show you, if you don't mind. And that is going to be in Microsoft Word. We have this. This is uh, us starting to rope in other professionals and other engineers to work on the project because we will need a pretty kind of extensive uh, folder to send to the municipality to get the building permit, right? So this is one of those. This is a preliminary energy efficiency calculation where all of the different um, things that influence energy efficiency are considered and certain kind of values are derived from them. So for instance, what kind of, a, what kind of lighting uh, is there going to be in the building? And we say that it's all gonna be LED, right? And for that, we don't get any kind of any crap because if we said that it's all gonna be low efficiency, uh, you know, heat, light bulbs, I, I don't know, Wolfram light bulbs, then this wouldn't fly, right? We would need to uh, somehow counterbalance that with even thicker walls, for instance. Um, then what kind of a ventilation system are you using? What kind of a, how, how, man, how much water can the building, building hold in itself? Um, what kind of pipes are you using? What, of course, what kind of walls are you using, right? Uh, how, how much heat insulation are you using? And so on, right? So, and, and also windows, blah, blah, blah. So all of this um, gets calculated and a certain number is pushed out. And I don't think we have the number just yet because it's all pre preliminary. No, we don't. We don't have the... Uh, we, we don't have the final number, uh, but we, we have a few from which we can see where the problem is. And right now we don't think that there's any problem in us receiving A++ class certification for energy efficiency with this kind of a design, right? So this is just one thing that we order uh, from another company to do. 
for, or from the sometimes from the government agency to do. Um, and there's going to be much more. Um, what are other like further stages? Because I'm, I'm, I'm done with this one now. Uh, so what are the further stages uh, for, for this? We are going to be detailing it. We're going to talk with the engineer uh, about it. The engineer is going to make certain amount of kind of additional drawings, like detailed drawings for this building, right? That's going to be added. Uh, there's going to be a lot of kind of different smaller calculations that are going to be added. And the... Let's say the stockpile of the of the documents is just going to where, where is the camera? It's just going to whoop, boop, 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 just keep going. So by the end of it, we should have uh, more than a hundred pages. I think, I, I think I might be wrong, but I think it's going to be more than a hundred pages. And I'm going to show all, uh, the, all of them to you, but we're not there yet. The construction documentation stage has just begun. So I will give you an update once um, this has been done. It's probably going to take a little bit of time, but it's not going to be four months. And then we will move on to further stages, such as getting the goddamn building approval. <laughs> and that's going to be, that's literally going to be just me talking at the camera how screwed up the system is. <laughs> but... Before that, we need to finish the project. Okay, hope you enjoyed this one. Hope you found this informative and I'll, I'll see you in the next one. Later.